This video is sponsored by AudioMika, manufacturers of the interconnects and speaker cables used by a British audiophile. For more information about these and their other products, please click the link in the description. The chances are that if you're looking for a streamer below £1,000 over the last 10 years, a Blue Sound node would be pretty much at the top of your list. The Lembrook Company, which also owns NAD and PSB speakers, was one of the first companies to invest a large amount of money in their streaming app. They produced a product that was nice to look at, sounded good enough to keep audiophiles happy, and was a joy to interact with. That's the thing. Streamers not only need to look good and sound good, but they live and die by the quality of their app. Blue Sound have had the sub £1,000 market pretty much sewn up for the last decade. Sure, there have been challenges. Like Raspberry Pi type devices where tech savvy individuals could add a power supply to a streaming board and find a case to house their self-built inexpensive streaming solution. But you still had to add third party software and not many people could be bothered to go down the DIY route. Companies like Volumio, who started by offering Raspberry Pi type upgrades and solutions, have now grown into offering their own dedicated standalone streamers. iFi is another company that offers accessibly priced devices for people dabbling with streaming or looking for cost effective solutions. Neither of those two will keep Blue Sound employees awake at night, because if you're looking for a slick and easy user experience, Blue Sound is the way to go. I guess the only serious contender to the mighty node over the last 10 years for a while was the Aurelic Aries Mini. Sounding better than the node at the time, but with a less sophisticated user interface, the Aries Mini was a bit of a bargain at £449. I bought one about four years ago when I found out it was being discontinued and not replaced. It just didn't make financial sense for Aurelic to continue to produce a streamer at that price. I've been feeling pretty smug since, considering that today the cheapest Aurelic streamer sells for over £2,500. But now we have a new kid on the block. The Ever Solo DMP A6 has been selling out like hotcakes. I'm not surprised given the way that it looks, is built, and is reputed to sound. I'm delighted to have the Blue Sound Note X and the Ever Solo DMP A6 here at the same time. And I'm going to deviate from my standard review format to focus on the key differences that differentiate what I think must be the two most significant streaming products on the market right now. So no more prelims. Let's get started. There is nothing wrong with the way that the Blue Sound Node X is built. It's what you'd expect from a half rack width unit that retails for £699. The case may be plastic, but the unfussy clean lines are attractive and the rounded edges a nice touch. I can see it getting a high level of spouse approval, even with the most scrutinising companions. It feels nice in the hand, there's nothing flimsy about its construction, and 1.1 kilograms or 2.4 pounds is a decent weight for such a compact unit. The Eversolo DMP A6 is considerably taller, quite a bit deeper and wider than the Node X, but it still only offers a little bit more girth than a half rack width unit. The CNC machine aluminium casework is class defining for a unit that retails for £759. I'll come to the display later, but details like the heatsink style fins running along the side and the Eversolo logo engraved on the top of the case lend a feeling of quality and confirm that you're getting a lot more than expected in this market segment. The Node X is a great example of hi-fi that doesn't draw attention to itself. It's very elegant, understated, and there's no aerials sticking out the back. The DMP A6 is the complete opposite. That six inch display announces its presence, but in terms of pure build quality, there's a clear winner here, and it's the Ever Solo. I thought this was going to be another clear win for the Eversolo DMP A6, because when you have a look at the back of the two units, the Eversolo has a lot more going on, but things are a little bit different under close examination. The first clue is actually on the front. The Node X has a quarter inch 6.25 mm headphone jack. You won't find any input to connect your cans on the front or the back of the DMP A6. As for digital inputs, the Eversolo has optical, coaxial and USB-C 
To the left, the top USB-B port can be used to access music stored on external flash drives and hard drives. The DMP A6 has another trick up its sleeve. Undo a screw at the bottom and you can store up to a 4TB M2 SSD drive. Compatible drives will need to follow the NVMe protocol. A 2TB drive should be ample for most people and costs around £100, turning the EverSolo streamer into a cost-effective music server. Back to the rear and it's bizarre that a HDMI port is offered to output multi-channel audio. EARC would have been an infinitely better use of space, allowing people to connect to TV and use the TV remote to seamlessly control the volume of the DMP A6. Do you know what does have an EARC input? The Blue Sound Node X. It works seamlessly with my TV remote and it's hard to get back to using an optical connection once you've got used to this feature. The Node X does have an optical input as well, but you need a cable with a mini Toslink connector as it doubles up as a 3.5mm analog input. There's only one USB port, so you're forced to decide if you want to use it for external drives or as an output to external DACs. Both units have digital coaxial and optical Toslink outputs, but I prefer a full array of digital inputs as long as I've got a USB digital output for technical reasons I'll discuss later. Whilst the Nodex has just RCA analog outputs, the DMP A6 has both RCA and balanced XLR. With internally a fully balanced DAC and output stage, it's a useful feature to keep noise low on long cable runs. Yeah, the Eversolar DMP A6 has overall more connections and the ability to fit an internal SSD drive to turn it into a cost-effective music streamer is a great feature. But on such a full-featured device to emit a headphone jack and HDMI eARC is a shame. The Blue Sound Node X has both, and that's why I think that overall it has the more useful connections. As far as software connectivity is concerned, both devices serve you very well. Streaming services such as Tidal, Cobuzz, Amazon Music, and Spotify are all there, plus many more. They're both rune ready. If you don't want to use the proprietary apps, you can stream direct via Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, Bluetooth, AirPlay, and third-party DNLA and UPnP apps. That brings me nicely onto the user interface. The Blue Sound Node X proximity controls allow you to operate basic functions. The five dots on the top can store favorite stations, albums, or playlists. You can adjust the volume, play and pause, skip tracks forwards and backwards, but that's your lot. The Eversolo DMP A6 has a 6 inch 150mm LCD touchscreen display. It's clear and fast thanks to a quad core ARM Cortex A55 processor using an Android 11 operating system that's been heavily modified. I expected the UI to be intuitive and everything was logically laid out. I'm not going to go into a deep dive into the menus, there's other videos out there providing that information if you want to know the ins and outs, but let me cover the main functions. On the main menu, the music icon allows you to install and access music libraries, be that an internal SSD or externally connected devices. Press the streaming icon and you'll find the featured streaming services. There's an ability to download other apps and directly connect alternative streaming protocols. The files icon will show you what's stored on the internal 32 gigabit system storage, the SSD if installed, and other devices connected externally. There are no prizes for guessing what the source icon does. It allows you to choose the input and the output you desire. Under apps, you can use a compatible CD drive for playback if connected, change the update settings, and open apps that you've downloaded. There's plenty to play around with in the settings menu. In the audio submenu, there's a choice of seven digital filters. Most make a small to imperceptible difference to the sound, but I did feel that the slow roll-off minimum phase filter gave the best balance between resolution and a natural sound. The display can be customized to preference. Those VU meters that get a lot of attention these days are bound to be a hit with users. It's unusual, but very nice to have such a large user-friendly display on a unit at this price. Streaming can be a less engaging experience than using physical media 
and the ability to display cover art so clearly certainly puts many more expensive devices to shame. A couple of niggles. You can't create playlists across platforms. For example, if you create a playlist in Tidal and want to add to it from your music library, you can't, and vice versa. I think the ability to create playlists across platforms is a very useful feature for a device like the DMP A6, which I think many people may choose to use as a music server. So I contacted the UK distributor and he confirmed that that feature is currently in development and should be coming in a future update. So that's good to know. My other gripe is that I couldn't get the DMP A6 to connect via the app to my iPad Pro. I had to install it on my phone. Everything worked seamlessly on my Android phone with functions that mirrored the menus on the device. It could be a problem with my iPad as I'm not aware that others have had this issue, but I'm here to report what I find. There were no problems using the Blue OS app on my iPad Pro. The Node X may be considerably behind the DMP A6 when it comes to interacting with the actual device, but it's a different story when it comes to interacting with the app. BlueOS, now in version 4.0, offers the best user interface I've encountered. Fast and intuitive like the EverSolo, but with the ability to customize screens and yes, create playlists across different sources as a true music management system. Given my previous experiences, at this stage I shouldn't really be surprised by the performance of new streaming devices, but the Blue Sound Node X and the EverSolo DMP A6 both performed at a level I hadn't anticipated. Now, to give you some context, four years ago when I bought my Aurelic Aries Mini, I was pretty convinced that that was the best streaming device on the market, below £500. It wasn't long after I bought it that I added an MCRU linear power supply for an additional £325. At the time, I was using a Cord Mojo DAC, and the power supply improved the sound more than switching the Mojo for the more expensive Cord Hugo. That was quite a revelation. I thought there's no way that these two new streamers with their internal power supplies are going to live up to my Aurelic MCRU combination. They both sounded cleaner. The Blue Sound Node X has a DAC based around an ESS Sabre 9028Q2M chip. The soundstage was wider than my own streaming combo, making it easier to follow performers in the mix. But the Node X was also more coloured due to extra weight in the bass and lower mids, imparting a warmer presentation. The EverSolo DMP A6 DAC is based around two ESS Sabre 9038Q2M chips in a fully balanced configuration. It was a little cleaner sounding than the Node X. The leading edges of notes were crisper and the decays fell into a quieter background. The soundstage wasn't as wide as the Node X but matched my Aurelic MCRU duo. The DMP A6 also showed some obvious coloration. There was some prominence in the upper mid-range. It gave vocals and lead instruments more forwardness. The treble was also edging towards the bright side. It wasn't excessive but I'd be careful partnering the Evo Solo in already lively sounding systems. Out of the other two streaming DACs that I've mentioned in this video though, it was the most resolving. I'd use the Blue Sound to balance more analytical sounding systems with amps and speakers in the sub £1,000 category. For example, the Audiolab 6000A that I reviewed some time ago comes to mind as a sensible bedfellow. The Evo Solo should provide equilibrium in warmer sounding systems. Again, with components in the sub £1,000 category. And here, the Cambridge Audio CXA61 strikes me as a suitable dance partner. If you're spending over £1,000 on an amplifier and a similar amount on speakers, it's time to consider these very two good sounding streaming DACs as streaming transports and connect them to an external DAC of better quality. Now, I should point out that they sounded much better through their USB output than through their SPDIF outputs. In fact, with the EverSolo, the coaxial and optical digital output sounded so bad that I wouldn't bother using them at all. And there's technical reasons why this might be the case. It's to do with the USB being asynchronous. That means that the DAC is responsible for the timing of information. Good quality external DACs are likely to have better internal clocks than these streamers, reducing jitter, which is a nasty type of distortion. A lot of good DACs also have galvanic or optical isolation on the USB input, preventing noise on ground and power lines along the USB bus from polluting the sensitive internal DAC electronics. Again, 
this has sonic benefits. If you've got amplifiers at around 1500 to 2000 pounds, something like the Exposure 2510 or the Wilsonton R8 with upgraded PS vein tubes that regularly feature in my reviews and speakers of equivalent quality, then the Denifrips Aries 12.1 or a DAC of equivalent standard would be a welcome addition. It provided quite a bit more detail, refinement, and much better three-dimensional ability. With my Hegel H190, I wanted a little bit more performance, and that was provided by the Gustard R26. And with my Exposure 21 Pre and 18 Super Monoblocks, nothing was shifting the Denifrips Venus 2 from my system. Now, even though I was only using these streamers as transports, and I noticed improvements in sound quality as I stepped into more expensive systems with more expensive DACs, as you'd expect, some of the characteristics of these devices still came through. My Relic Aries Mini was pretty neutral, the Blue Sound Node X, a touch laid back, and the Eversolo DMP A6 a little bit more forward. Go figure. The latest Blue Sound streamer has the connections that most people will need or desire, including a headphone socket and HDMI eARC. It sounds really good and will suit those who want a relaxed presentation or are taming bright systems. The Node X remains an excellent choice for anyone considering a sub £1,000 streamer. Yeah, the user interface on the device is very basic, but it also has the best streaming app that I've encountered. The overall package is very compelling, and that's why the Blue Sound Node X gets a very highly recommended from this channel. The Eversolo has a build quality that's beyond expectations given the price. Then there's that six inch touchscreen display, fast, intuitively laid out, and a joy to interact with. It's a little forward and lively in its presentation, but it's also more resolving than its competitor here. I'd like to see a future version of the DMP A6 with HDMI eARC, and I think many people would like to see a headphone socket too. But if you're not bothered about either of those two, and you're not partnering it in a bright system, then you're probably looking at the best streamer for you on the market below £1,000. The Eversolo DMP A6 also gets a very highly recommended from this channel. At the end of the day, there was no clear winner here. It was a case of horses for courses, although I suspect I'm going to have to choose between these two in my end of year roundup. In the case, I'll give that more consideration closer to the time. But it did get me thinking, what do you look for in the streamer and why? Please share that in the comment section. All that remains for me to say is if you like what I'm doing with this channel, you want to see it grow, and assuming you haven't done so already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Check me out on Patreon. There's some consultancy tiers you can access there if you think I can help you on your audiophile journey. Also check out the ABA Club on Patreon for great ways to interact with me and fellow Patreons. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.